So now let's start with some basic matrix cal uh, calculus. So how many of you guys knows matrix calculus before? Okay, so good, like 20%. Uh, um, but I, I, I guess everybody should know scalar derivatives. Now, um, so here, y is a scalar, um, x is scalar. So given y is a function of x, so we're gonna compute dy over dx. Now, if a is not a function of x, so what's the results? Zero. Zero, good. So if x to the power of m, what's the results? Good. So that's, everybody should know it. EXP is still EXP, log x is one over x, and sine is cosine. Also we have, if it's u plus v, we're gonna have du over dx plus du, uh, dv over dx. If it's u times v, we're gonna have du over dx times v plus dv over dx times u. Similar for chain rule. If y is a function of u, u is a function of uh, x, we can write it down as dy over du times du over dx. So that is for scalars, it's pretty simple. The one important concept here is that the derivative is a slope of the tangent line. So here I draw a figure of uh, the square of x. So there is a yellow line, and at, x, at the point x equals to one, we know the derivative is two x is two, so that the slope of the tangent line is two. So that's an uh, important concept we're gonna use for gradient descent ladder. Um, the other concept here is that not every function is differentiable. Similarly, we, at the first class, we talked about the L1 norm. It's actually a simple version, it's the absolute value of x. So at x equals to zero, at this point, it's not differentiable. So every line, we can draw every line under the curve, and the slope can be the sub uh, derivative. So this is generalized the derivative concept, and it's pretty useful because we have a lot of functions in deep learning actually is not differentiable. So here in this particular case, uh, the sub derivative of, uh, of absolute value of x equals to one if it's f larger than zero, minus one, x more than zero, at x equal to zero, it can be any value between minus one and one. In practice, we kind of choose a particular value, can be either minus one, one, or zero. Another example is the max operator. It's also an important operator. We're gonna use for max pooling ladder. So given max x to zero, if x larger than zero is one, if x more than zero, it's zero. And at the point x equal to zero, we can choose any value between zero and one. Usually we pick up either one or zero. So now we're gonna generalize the scalars to vectors. So that's a key thing because all the neural networks machine learning, we're gonna talk about vectors and matrix and tensor. So let's first look at how we can make x and y into vectors. So bo if both x and y are scalars, we know the gradient is a scalar. So gradient is actually, if it's a vector, we call it gradients. So now, if x is a vector, it's a column vector, and y is a scalar, which is the first row, we're gonna get partial y over partial x, can still a vector, but now it's a row vector. Similarly, if x is scalar, but y is a vector, so the gradients will be a vector, has the same shape as y. In the more general case, both x and y are vectors. Now we get a matrix of the gradients. Now we're gonna dive deep into how they're calculated. Now for in the first case, x is an n-dimensional vector. It's from x1 to xn. You have n elements here. Then y is a scalar. Then partial y over partial x is a row vector. And the i element is a derivative of y with respect to xi. So um, here we use a partial notation. This is a generalized uh, denotation to vectors. 
So let's look at an example here. If y equals to x1 to uh, squared plus 2 times x2 squared, then the first element of the gradient <coughs> is res res uh, with respect to x1 is 2 times x1. The second element is with res respect to x2 is 4 times x2. Now, the most important thing here is that the gradient is the direction that you change the value most. So in particular, at this point, x1 equals to 1, x2 equals to 1, we have gradients is, is 2 and 4. So that is a point of direction perpendicular to the counter line, which if we move the point along this gradients, we're going to increase this value. We're going to increase the value of y. So if we're going to decrease this value, we just move along the opposite direction of the gradients. So that concept makes the, it's the fundamental thing for all the gradient descent for how we actually solve the a new analog star. Then look at some examples here. Y is a scalar, and now x is the undimension, uh, undimensional uh, vector. A is a non-function of x, so what's the result here? You do element by element, zero, okay? It's a row vector of zero, which zero is undimensional ve uh, undense ve uh, vector, but it's a row vector. So how about a times u? u is a function of x. Okay, so it's actually a times the gradient of u with respect to x. Another one, if we can assign element of x to get a scalar, then we get the all one vectors. It's a row vector again. And the last one is the square of uh, L2 long. Then uh, we got two times the transpose of x. We can still have all these rules here, u plus v, u times v, and um, similar to the scalar uh, options. The only thing here is like the inner product of u and v, we get u transpose times partial v over partial x plus the transpose of v times partial u partial over partial uh, x. So we know that u is, the transpose u is a row vector, and then partial v and partial x, that's a matrix. A row vector times a matrix, you still get a row vector. So the, as a result, we still get a row vector as the gradient. Okay, um, so now, if we're gonna switch, question. The previous slide, the partial uh, v, partial x, is that equivalent? Um, yes, so we're gonna talk about, is actually on the, if both are vectors, we call the Jacobi matrix. Um, so now we switch, y is a vector, x is scalar. Um, so in this case, we're gonna get the column vector here. So the i element of the uh, vector is the yi, uh, partial yi over partial x. So why we change the order. So remember that if x is a vector, we got the row vector. If a y is vector, we get a co uh, column vector. So this column numerator layout. We can transport as well. We can let, if x is vector, we get a column vector. And if y is a vector, we get a row vector. We, can, we just switch, then we call it uh, denominator layout. So that's a homework you're gonna have, a, have in fun. But actually we can change this to, we are gonna not, uh, we got a little bit trouble later, but uh, we have a homework for that. In the last case, both y and x is a vectors. So the matrix we call the Jacobi matrix, so we can look into that. Uh, we know that if y is vector, we get our uh, column vector. So this, this means we have each row is will be the partial yi over x. And partial yi over vector x is a row matrix. Uh, sorry, it's a row vector, so at the end we got the matrix here. 
Okay, so we're gonna uh, give some examples and having a uh, more clear understanding of that. So now, we have both vectors, y and x. Assume a is a constant and a vector of constant. So what's the result right now? Okay, all zeros. So it's a matrix, it's all zeros. The second question is like, if y equals to x, what is partial x over partial x? Okay, identity matrix. The reason is because, let, let me draw down a little bit. Um, So we know that the i row and the just colon will be uh, xi. So it equals to one if i equals to j, and zero if i not equals to j. So we got identity matrix here. The second question is like, how to do a, which is a matrix a times x? Uh, with, res with, uh, with respect to x. So let me do that again here. If ax, so now we know this is a vector, partial. So we know that it's equal to partial ax, the so ith element with respect to x. So if you can write a to be the a1, a0, a1 is a, it's a ith row of A, and we stack vertically, we get an. Then here, ax, the ith element, will be the inner, inner product of ai times x. So which means here is the inner product of ai times x equals to ai. We have, we talked about uh, previously. So which means it's actually, uh, it's, this is equal to ai, and we stack ai together, we call a. So the, the answer is a. If we do a transpose, we can actually transpose um, we can do transports. Um, that's also pretty simple. This one, because we, for vector, we, you can transport the vector. It's a row vector, column vector, doesn't matter. So actually, it's equals to, we transport y equals to a plus x. And so we get the transport a, that's it. Um, the other thing, we have a lot of uh, similar thing for matrix and the vectors here. Uh, a times u, is equal, if a is a constant, it's a scalar. We have a times uh, partial u over partial x. And if it's matrix, uh, we put the matrix out, and if the u plus v, similar as before. Okay, so now we can make more generalized uh, case. If x is a matrix, we're gonna not dive deeper into the details how to calculate them, but they kind of give you the shapes, which is you can infer what is actually calculated. Let's look at the first row, when y is a scalar. So x is, if x is scalar, we get a scalar. x is vector, we get a row uh, vector. If x is a matrix, we get a matrix. But look at the shape, x is, is n by k matrix, but now the gradients are like k by n matrix. We reverse the shape here. We do a transpose here. Look at the first row, uh, colon. If x is scalar, um, if y is scalar, you get a scalar. Y is a vector, you get a vector. It has the same shape. 
if y is a matrix, you will get a matrix with the same shape. So now look at the second row when y is a vector. The, more, the interesting case is that um, <coughs> if x is matrix, we got the shape is a 3D tensor. The tensor shape, the first shape m from the ve vector of y. y is len m length vector. The second k at n shape from matrix A, but reverse the matrix here. So it's n by k by n. In the last column, uh, in the last row, if y is a matrix, x is a vector, we still get, uh, we copy the matrix shape and then got uh, the length of the x. In the most complicated case, both x and the y are matrix, we get a 3D tensor, or uh, 4D tensor. The first two shape, m and l, is copied from y. And the third and the fourth shape, k and n, is copied from x, but the reversed it. So in general, you can get any arbitrary y and arbitrary shape x. We first put the y shape before and reverse the shape of x and the pen at, uh, at the end. So that is how we can do tensor calculus, actually. Okay. Um,